So if you've been to the channel before, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. Today's video, we are going to discuss lip lift surgery. Volumized lips has been a very popular technique for patients both young and old, male and female, over the last five to ten years. As we all know, both in celebrity culture but also in the media, a full round lip volume is something that many people are looking for. In an aim to achieve this, we have seen a huge boom in the lip filler market over the last ten years typically involving hyaluronic acid, which is standard filler, but in some cases more permanent products or even implants to try and make lips look fuller. Normal lip volume in the Caucasian patient is represented by a lower lip, which is typically twice the vertical height of the upper lip. Many patients would like this balance more 50-50 and a lip lift can help with this. In those patients who are older, who have very thin lower and upper lips, then a lip lift will only improve the upper lip volume and an alternative technique for the lower lip may be needed. The difficulty I see in my practice is patients who've had lip filler multiple times and what they're left with is a slightly lumpy, scarred, uneven lip top and bottom. Patients often will ask me if there is a solution to this or if there is a more permanent option to give them upper lip volume. And a different group of patients are older ladies who have lost lip volume with age, who now have very little mucosa from the front. They would like a fuller, more permanent solution for increased lip show. The last group of patients we see are those with a typically long face, long nose and tall upper lip. By that I mean the skin between the root of the nose and the lip itself can be too long, creating a slightly long face which people would like to address. All of these groups of patients come asking for lip lift surgery and so we're going to discuss the ins and outs of that procedure with you today. Just to recap on lip filler in general, lip filler has been popular for many years and some celebrities have made their careers out of plump lips. The difficulty is that multiple injections of hyaluronic acid into a soft sensitive part of the body, namely the lips, not only creates unevenness through the filler itself, but also creates scar tissue from multiple passes of either a needle or a cannula through delicate tissues. A further complication which I believe is underestimated in people who have had their lips filled are small infectious granules. We call these granulomas and they're tiny microscopic scar elements where the body tries to wall off small patches of infection which can be introduced during lip filler application. This is especially the case with home lip filler or lip filler applied in a less than ideal cosmetic surgical environment. These small granulomas create even denser, thicker scar tissue, which can create unevenness, asymmetry, and quite unpleasant looking lips. This is a significant problem for future generations this sounds like I'm being melodramatic, but I have seen many cases of lip filler being applied five, six, seven times, leaving deformed, lumpy, asymmetric lips, and there's very little that can be done short of surgically removing the scar tissue to try and return these lips to normal. The difficulty removing the scar tissue, as you can imagine, is it creates more scar tissue and thus can exacerbate or worsen the problem. For that reason alone, I strongly advise that anybody of any age who is considering having hyaluronic acid filler injected into the same part of their body more than three or four times should very much consider speaking to their plastic surgeon about any other alternatives like 
fat or surgical intervention, the problem with scar formation and stiffness can be avoided. For those patients who believe they have a tall upper lip, a lack of lip show, or they want a more permanent solution to their upper lip volume, lip lift surgery is a good option. During your consultation, we will discuss your anatomical preferences, what you are trying to achieve. We will also discuss any medical history that you may have, including medication that would cause problems with surgery, like blood thinners or diabetes medication. We will also discuss allergies, and very importantly, we will discuss the type of scar tissue that your body makes. Scar tissue can be very unpredictable, not only between two people, but also in the same person in different sites of the body. The chest, ears, and the neck often scar much worse than the face, for example. If you have nothing in your medical history that would overly concern us regarding lip lift surgery, then we will have a discussion about what it can achieve. The main goal is to sacrifice upper lip height, i.e. the skin between the nose and the lip, to increase lip show. A combination of these two effects is the ideal result or outcome from lip lift surgery, and so patients who have both requests at the core of their consultation will do the best with lip lift surgery. In terms of the surgical experience, then the operation is performed under local anaesthetic in an outpatient setting. You will be asked to sign some paperwork which discusses the benefits and complications associated with lip lift surgery. These complications include infection, swelling, bruising, subtle or moderate asymmetry. For your information, the vast majority of patients are noticeably asymmetric. It's often a surprise to me when I discuss asymmetry with patients in my clinic and they tell me it's the first time they have ever noticed. If you are asymmetric in the upper lip area before surgery, then you are highly likely to be asymmetric after surgery. We will take photos and mark the area to be lifted after injecting three to four needles of local anaesthetic, which unfortunately is a little uncomfortable in this specific area, we can perform the surgery. The surgical procedure involves a fairly classical bullhorn style, whereby we remove the piece of skin immediately below the nostrils and the alars of the nose, you can see from this diagram why it's called a bullhorn excision. We also find it important to remove a strip of the muscles that elevate the central portion of the lip. Otherwise, these muscles can be quite powerful and they can cause a recurrence of the vertical lip height due to their activity after surgery. Dissolving stitches both in the muscle layer and the skin are used. It's not an easy area to dress, but the stitches we use are very fine and they allow you to go back to relatively normal activity the next day. Unfortunately, although they are fine, scars in all patients tend to remain red and obvious in such a obvious place on the face as just below the nose. And so if you don't want anyone to know about your recent surgery, then we would strongly recommend seven to 10 days out of public circulation while the scar softens. The tiny dissolving stitches can be moisturized away after seven days and the scar will settle over the next three to six months. An alternative to the bullhorn lip lift is a vermilion border lift. This is a much more old fashioned technique whereby the entire upper lip or indeed the lower lip can be increased in height. Unfortunately, this generates a scar exactly along the vermilion border, which is the border between the lip and the lip skin. This, even in the best patients, is a little difficult to hide without lipstick or makeup and has fallen somewhat out of favour. The limitations of lip lift surgery are fairly obvious from the anatomy, but they include only a moderate increase in show, I would imagine that somewhere between 50 and 60% of 
increase in upper lip show is what we would expect. I sometimes have people asking if I can do the procedure for a second time because they would like additional upper lid show. The difficulty with this is there is not normally enough upper lid skin to allow us to do this procedure twice while maintaining a relatively normal anatomy. In the vast majority of cases, the scar settles so well that it is virtually invisible by four weeks. Unfortunately, there is no guarantee of this. And in a small number of patients who make lumpy or red scars, the scar can persist for longer. I have never seen it, but there is a theoretical possibility of the scar persisting and not fading to an acceptable standard, leaving a scar under the nostrils, which is in a very obvious place if people were to look for it. This is an unfortunate but unavoidable rare complication of lip lift surgery. Infections are very rare. Subtle asymmetries, as we have discussed, are relatively common. Most people's lips, if they are symmetrical at rest, are asymmetric during movement. And conversely, those patients who are asymmetric at rest often become symmetrical during movement. A lip lift operation will not significantly improve this dynamic. Patients often ask me if they will never need filler again if they have a lip lift operation. Unfortunately, we cannot guarantee this. There will certainly be an increase in upper lip show, which will be more permanent than hyaluronic acid based filler. But patients often want more. And once we have done a lip lift, then if you subsequently want bigger lips still, or if you want the bottom lip augmenting to match the increased volume of the top lip, then filler or an alternative volume technique may be used. Overall, accepting these qualifications, lip lift surgery has a very high degree of satisfaction. The operation takes between 35 and 40 minutes and the recovery is relatively straightforward. My only advice is to stay away from contact sports and stay away from public gaze if it is something you want to hide, typically for 10 days or so until the stitches have dissolved. If you have any questions regarding lip lift surgery and how it might help you, by all means get in touch with us here at Adam Goodwin Surgery. We would happily look at a photo if you would like to send one and give you some advice about what options you have and if lip lift is a good option for you